السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی سیدنا و نبینا و حبیب قلوبنا و طبیب نفوسنا و شفیع ذنوبنا اب القاسم محمد اللهم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و علی اہل بیت الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المظلومین المنتجبین لا سيما مولانا وسيدي صاحب الاسر والزمان روحي وارواح العالمين له الفداء واجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف ولعنة دائمة على اعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم الى الان الى قيام يوم الدين اما بعد فقد قال الله الحكيم في كتابه المبين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لئن شكرتم لازيدنكم وان كفرتم ان عذابي لشديد صدق الله العلي العظيم My dear brothers and sisters, as we enter into this new year of 2021, there is no doubt that when we look back at the past year, it, was, it has been full of various challenges at various levels for each and every one of us. And not only us, but all of those around the world, whether they be in the Muslim world or those who live in the non-Muslim world. We have all been going through numerous challenges, not only the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously that has ravaged the world for the last 10 months now, but many other difficulties have befallen the world. And especially we focus on the Muslim community, both here locally and obviously in many other parts of the earth that Allah has created. But one of the things that I want to, well, the theme that I want to begin rather for tonight, and it will go on for about two or three sessions is something which we have to take out of all of this that we have been going through, all that we have experienced, all that we have seen unravel on the, around the world, on, on the world stage. And that is a concept which many times we may pay lip service to, that we may perform, but we maybe don't actually recognize the true value and worth of it. And that is shukr, giving thanks. In our context, giving thanks to Allah, giving thanks to God for everything that we have gone through. And obviously, I don't want to limit our discussion in these two or three sessions only to the tragedies of COVID-19 and the many community members that we have lost. But rather, in a general sense, I want to look at the concept of shukr, of thanking God. And really, the impetus behind this uh, series is based upon one of the munajat, one of the whispered prayers of our fourth Imam, Imam Ali ibn Hussein Zainul Abidin, alayhi salatu wasalam, in his beautiful book of supplications known as As-Sahifatul Kamilatul Sajjadiya. He has at the end of all the supplications 15 what are called the Al Munajat, the 15 whispered prayers where he prays to Allah in a very unique way, which is a very different style than the other du'as that are within the sahifa. And so I want to look at the munajat of the shakirin, which uh, I believe is sub, uh, munajat number six. But before I even am able to go into the topic of what the munajat speaks about, I need to introduce the topic of shukr. Why is it important? Where do we get this concept from? What does the Qur'an speak about gr giving gratitude to God? And once we can develop the base, the, found the foundation of shukr, I will then be able to go into the actual munajat and for us to be able to better reflect on us giving thanks to Allah. Now, obviously this word shukr is an Arabic word. It comes from a root word which we translate into English roughly as being uh, showing thanks or gratitude. And so shukr in and of itself, showing thanks is a concept that is obviously rooted within the Quran, within the ahadith, and we look at some of these verses tonight. And when we use it in English as the word thanks or giving gratitude or expressing appreciation to somebody, we also realize the fact that not only is this a concept in English and in Western culture, but this is actually seen in probably every language of the world and every culture. It's frequently used in many uh, cultures, in different languages, obviously. And thinking, thanking people, rather, is something which we have been um, almost ingrained to do. It's something which we do as a sign of respect, 
um, when somebody does something for you. It could be something as simple as keeping the door open when they walk into a, a store or the mall. Uh, it could be, you know, many different things that somebody does for you. Something very simple, which we may feel to be insignificant or which they may even feel to be insignificant. And yet as a cultural practice, as a human <clears throat> norm, as a societal norm, we always thank people for when they even do these very little things, you know, for us. And one of the interesting things is that if you, to, if you were to study human psychology, if you were to study this, the, the societies on this earth and the evolution and development of societies, <clears throat> and even I, I mentioned like societies which are not based on religion, on Islam, or on divinely sacred teachings, cultures that, for example, are secular in nature, that don't have or involve God in a, in a, in a daily basis as a Muslim community would be doing, even in those societies, we would see that giving thanks to other people is a norm in that society. And obviously, if you study the philosophy of ethics, the philosophy of akhlaq, they talk about, you know, are these kinds of qualities and traits such as truthfulness, honesty, sincerity, giving thanks to people, are these uh, things that have been taught and are, are, are taught uh, disciplines or principles, or are they ingrained in our being that we were created by God with all of these. That's obviously an entire separate discussion in, of it, in and of itself. However, at the end of the day, we all recognize that when anybody does something for which we are indebted to them, and we cannot physically repay them, let's say with a monetary compensation, they would not accept it or it's not a part of the norm of a society, um, but they do some support to us, they give us some support, they provide some service to us, then the least that we can do is to say, thank you for that. And interesting enough, our scholars of akhlaq actually go a step further and they actually say to an extent, we even see this in animals. Right? You think about, for example, a dog, or if you have a cat at home as a pet, especially these two, the dogs and cats, maybe are, this is more observed in them, but this would definitely be seen in many other animals. Uh, some of them, obviously, we can't really appreciate or recognize it. But let's say in dogs or in cats, um, when you feed them or you provide them something that they needed in their life, they seem to be thankful to us. Right? A dog may, for example, wag its tail. Or it may come up and cuddle the person. Or in some way, some form, some fashion, it may show an, an aspect of it being uh, thankful to you, to show its gratitude for you providing a benefit to that animal. Now, is this just uh, an animal instinct? Or has it learned it from somewhere? Or is this something which God has put within even the animal kingdom? That when you provide it something it needs, it recognizes you as the benefactor, as the one who has given to them? And so they reciprocate in the only way that they know possible. Again, that's another area of discussion which we park onto the side we don't want to get into tonight. Let me move on and basically say that whatever the case may be, is that we are all in one way ingrained with this need to show gratitude when anytime anybody does something good for us. Now, when you look at it from the theological perspective, from our aqaid, from our Islamic principles, our scholars of theology actually tell us that one of the reasons why we are obligated, why it is wajib to find Allah, to seek out Allah, to recognize our Creator, one of the reasons why this is there as a principle of our belief and that why we are not allowed to do taqlid in matters of aqaid, I cannot believe in one God, as the creator, as the fashioner, as the sustainer, as the maintainer of the entire universe, I can't believe in him just by way of taqlid, is because of the fact that when it comes to recognizing somebody who has given you a benefit, you need to go out and search for that person. And in our case, not person, but in our case, to find that individual, that entity that has given us so much. And so the need to find Allah, to recognize Allah from the Aqayyad perspective, to study Him, to accept His oneness, that He is not divisible, that He is not multiple gods, that intellect, our aql, would deem this to be wajib because we, we would have to recognize the fact that everything that we have 
has not come just out of thin air. It didn't just uh, evolve into existence. It did not come just out of the blue. But rather, there is a higher, a higher power and authority out there in the world, which we call obviously Allah, which is named, known as God, that we believe that it is that entity that has given us everything. And just as when somebody, for example, were to keep the door open for us, or were to help us cross the street, or were to do some service to us to help us, we would want to know that person, at, 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 even at a very superficial level, so that we could thank them. Well, if we look at our lives and all that we have, the, the, the existence that we, just even the existence in and of itself, then does it not stand to reason that we need to find out who gave us this existence so that we can thank that individual? You know, in the Quran, there's a beautiful verse in chapter 76, which is Surah Al-Insan, also known as Surah Al-Dahar, also known as a chapter about the Ahlul Bayt, alayhum salatu was salam, because of the story of them feeding the orphan, the poor person, and the war captive. And there's an entire narration about that. I don't want to look at that tonight. But in this chapter, in right at the beginning, in verse number three, Allah says, Inna hadaynahu sabil, imma shakiran wa imma kafuran that we have guided the human being, we have shown them the path, we have shown them the way of what God wants us to do in life. And he says either they are shakir, they are a thankful person, or they are ungrateful. Now the, these two groups of people in this verse, when Allah says that he has guided them, and they're either thankful or ungrateful, or, or rather extremely ungrateful, would be a correct translation of the Arabic kafur, those who have searched and done their due diligence and found God and are now following the path of God that he has laid down, that he wants them to follow, that um, is the path of the final pro of the prophet of their time. Obviously, in our case, and in the case of humanity for today, for 2021, that final path is that of the Qur'an of Islam, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allah considers those who have found the path, who have accepted the path, who are following the path, who have submitted on that path, as being shakir, as being thankful. And those who go the other route, who maybe even recognize Islam as being the right way of life, but reject it for other reasons, for other ulterior motives that they may have, God refers to them as kafur, those who are extremely ungrateful. Now here, the word kafir does not necessarily mean disbeliever, but that is an aspect or an outcome that they have disbelieved, but Allah calls them those who are extremely ungrateful because they fail to recognize that their existence belongs or is, is, is because God has brought them into this life. The greatest of the blessings which they should have been thankful for. They thanked somebody for opening the door. They thanked somebody for maybe carrying their groceries. They thanked somebody for many very superficial, trivial things. But when it comes to knowing the greatest blessings which they have, which is life, and the powers and the faculties that they have been given, they refuse or they reject or they completely deny there to be a God. And so they are extremely ungrateful. And they have not fulfilled their obligations as a citizen and as a human being to find and to thank the greatest of benefactors that could ever give them anything in this life. In fact, if you look further into the Quran, we see that Allah tells us that we were given life. This life that you and I enjoy today, <clears throat> we were given this life. We were given the faculties of hearing, the faculty of seeing with these eyes, and the uh, what Allah calls the fu'ad, the spiritual heart. He says we were given all of this so that we would reflect, we would look, we would listen, we would take in everything in our surroundings, and we would thank Allah. And so in chapter number 16, verse number 78, Allah says, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُطُونِ أُمَهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْءَ وَالْأَبْسَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ God brought you forth from the wombs of your mothers when you knew nothing 
came into this world, we didn't know anything. Our mother delivered us. She went through months and months of pregnancy, maybe hours of labor. And we come into this world having no knowledge of very, or very little knowledge. We, you know, we didn't study in the womb of our mother. But he says, you come into this world and you, la ta'lamuna shay'an. And then God says that he has given you in order that you may be perfected through these uh, faculties, through the art of learning. He says that he gave us the power of hearing. We were endowed with hearing, with eyes for sight, and with these af'ida, these spiritual heart, to be able to take in everything and process it and understand it. And all of this, Allah says, why did he do it? It wasn't so we could become millionaires or travel the world or anything. He says, لَأَلَّكُمْ Tashkurun, that perhaps from all of this that you will see around you, that you would hear, that you would process, that you would take in the research that you and I would do, that we would give thanks to God. We would recognize Him as the Creator. We would thank Him. We would fulfill the obligations, obviously, because thanks is not just a verbal thank you by taking the tasbih or the prayer beads or saying shukran lillah but that we would actually fulfill, put into action His commandments that He expects from each and every one of us, every human being, not just the Muslims. Now, let me give you another verse as I move on. In another verse of the Qur'an, actually, which is found in chapter 8, Surah Al-Anfal, uh, verse number 26, there's a beautiful verse which tells us that the safety that we enjoy, the security that we have, which, you know, Alhamdulillah, in Canada we have security, the comforts that we enjoy, the help that we get from Allah, the sustenance, the rizq that God has given to us. Allah says all of these things are precursors to one particular action which He expects from us. That action is shukr, is to show gratitude, to show thanks to God. And so Allah says, وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ أَنْتُمْ قَلِيلٌ مُسْتَذْعَفُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Again, in this verse, what does Allah say? He says, and remember with gratitude, when you were few and deemed weak in the land and oppressed, you were the mustad afin. So Allah says, remember that time when you as Muslims, you were few in numbers, you were mustad afin, people considered you to be weak, insignificant, worthless. They could just push, push you over and you would fall. He says, remember that time when you were oppressed in the earth, fearing that people would terrorize you. <clears throat> fearing that people would terrorize you. How Allah provided you with refuge and strengthened you with His help and provided for you sustenance out of the pure, wholesome things, the tayyibat. Why was all of this done for you and I? Given security, safety from terrorism, from anarchy, from chaos. لَأَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That maybe you and I may give thanks to God from our heart and by our speech, by saying shukran lillah, by verbally thanking Allah and by showing gratitude to God in action, by fulfilling again His commandments. And we will see this later on in our discussion, probably in our second and third discussion, of how shukr actually takes form. Because it's not just words on the lips, it's not just a gratitude in the heart, it actually has to be realized by action, by fulfilling certain commandments, which would be the epitome which would be the true meaning of shukr, of thanking Allah. Now, due to this extreme importance that we have when we show, when we are ex expected to show gratitude to Allah, as you've just seen in three different verses of the Quran, and again, there are many more that we could have quoted, but obviously for, uh, to keep this first session brief, we've just provided those three verses that shows us the need of thankfulness to God first and foremost. We also have multiple hadith, again, which we'll get into our next, which we'll look at some of in our, in our next discussion. We have to ask ourselves that, um, why would God put all of this in? And why would He expect us to show thanks? And are there 
prerequisites or is showing thanks to people based on any other principles. Like I gave the example of somebody who keeps open the door. Is that all there is that you find a door that's open one day and you thank whoever is there? Right. And again, keeping in mind that we also try to understand from this the need to thank Allah by recognizing Him. That's also an aspect of this discussion. And so we have to recognize the fact that when we want to thank somebody, it's based on four reasons. Right. And obviously when I say somebody, we also want to draw from that to thanking Allah, but we have to have these four also when it comes to the thanks that we show to Allah. But at the first level, we recognize that thanks is due to someone or to Allah when they have done something for us directly. Not that they did something for themselves and then we thank them for that. Right? So in the case of Allah, well, as we know, He did not create us uh, for Himself in the sense that it wasn't like He was bored and had nothing to do, so He just put us on earth. But He's given us this opportunity to live is he's given that to us directly. So the first point is when somebody does something to us directly, then we begin this process of recognizing the need to thank them. But that's not all there is. There are three more points. So number two is that the service that they have provided should be valuable and significant. When somebody does something for us, it has to have some sense of value, significance, that we now need to thank them for it. I'll give an example at the end of this. The number, the third point of you know the, the tools or the keys that are needed before we can even show gratitude is that the person performing that service or that entity performing a service to us, they should have had the intention of wanting to provide a service to another person. Not that they just ended up by chance, by fluke, by doing something, and now we have to thank them for that. And the fourth point before I give an example, again, is that the person receiving the service, so the recipient of that good action, needs to recognize who did the action for them. So as an example, right, and this may be a very simple rudimentary example, but it hopefully will convey the point of these four um, issues that need to be in place before we can thank, is imagine you have a couple of bags of groceries in your hand. And you're going from one store to another store with these bags to get some other things. So rather than going to your car and dropping them off, you go from your, let's say, grocery store to the, the dollar shop or whatever it is. And you've got two or three heavy bags in your hands. <clears throat> now, you're walking towards that store and you need to open the door. And you get to the door and you see that, A, it's open already. And maybe somebody had walked in 20 seconds prior and the door was a motorized electric door, so it just stayed open. Would you run and thank that person? Oh, thank you, you opened the door for me. Well, he may just turn around or she may turn around and say, well, look, don't thank me. It's an automatic door. There's a motion sensor above the door. I didn't do anything. I just walked in. <clears throat> the sensor picked up that I walked by, so the door opened. Right? So they didn't do anything for you directly. There's no need to thank that person. Yes, it was, you know, the service that, well, what, you know, again, what service did they provide? It wasn't a valuable, significant service because all they did was walk by it. Um, they didn't have the Nia, the intention to keep the door open for you. They were just walking through that same door. And, you know, you don't even maybe recognize them because maybe it was you that set off the next motion detection by you walking past that motion sensor. So in such an example, it would be preposterous. It would be foolish to run after that person and thank them because they didn't do anything, you know, intentionally or unintentionally to help you out. But if you were to see that, if you were to having the, if you had those bags in your hand and you walked, you were going to another store and they didn't have a button you could push to open the door automatically or a motion sensor to, to sense somebody coming. And somebody saw you and they intentionally went out of their way to go and open the door and keep it open for you. To actually provide you a valuable service. They've done it directly to, for you. They've opened the door. They've seen you. They've gone. They've gone out of their way to open the door. They provided a service which was valuable that you needed that at that particular time. 
They have the niya, the intention to help you, and you recognize them because they're standing right in front of you. Obviously, in that instance, you would be obliged morally to thank that person for what they've done. It's, it's as simple as that. And this is where we have to get to, brothers and sisters, in our lives with our connection to Allah. Right? This is also the, one of the parts of our themes, is that we, do we recognize Allah as being the direct giver of all of these blessings that we value, that we cherish, that He, has ha he had the intention to do for us? that we uh, have benefited from, that do we now recognize Allah as the one who has given us all of this? Unfortunately, there are many times that we, even us believers, as mu'mineen, we forget to thank Allah. And many times I would say that we don't thank Allah. There are many reasons which we'll look at, in, again, when we actually begin the review of the munajat, but there are many times that we thank, we, rather we forget to thank Allah because we don't know God. We studied about God in Madrasa, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. But we were just told Allah is one. And we were given some very superficial teachings about our Creator. We never learned who God is to develop a relationship with Him, to have a love with God, to have a connection with God. We prayed our Salat, our Namaz, because it was something that we had to do. We prayed Dua Kumail on a Thursday night because we were told we had to go to the program. But we never understood who God is or, you know, uh, why He deserves this praise. And because we don't recognize Him and we don't recognize the good that we get as coming from Him, it becomes difficult to thank Him. You know, again, many times people say, had it not been for X, Y, and Z, I would have been in difficulties. I, I would have been in, in stress. You know, thankfully my job pays me well, we will say. Thankfully, uh, this person came to help me. But we forget the fact that whatever good we have is from Allah. مَا أَسَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنْ Allah, As Quran says in chapter 4, verse 79, Surah An-Nisa, O human being, whatever good you have, whatever hasana you have, فَمِنْ Allah, That is from Allah. So the paycheck we get is from Allah. It's not from our company. Indirectly, they are the means to it. Benefit that people give us, it's coming from that person, but it comes from God initially. Anything good that we have, brothers and sisters, comes from God. Comes from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. <clears throat> and as I said that Islam teaches us, as I said at the beginning, is that Islam teaches us that whatever goodness comes our way, whether that is through natural means, or it, it is through people, or it's through the angels that Allah is, has, has ordered to provide to humanity. All of this is through the intent and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so again, we have to go back to the fact to recognize that all such things are originating from Allah. When we recognize the rain as being a blessing of God, when we recognize that snow is a blessing from Allah, when we recognize that every aspect of our lives that we need to survive on this earth is from Allah, then we can begin to recognize Allah and begin to truly thank Allah. More than just saying shukran lillah, going to deeper levels which we will be investigating in these next few lectures. Now how did the Ahlul Bayt, salam, how did our Imams show us how to give gratitude and show thanks to Allah? Now there are obviously many, <clears throat> excuse me, many hadith that tell us how the Ahlul Bayt salam, would thank God. I just want to give you one practical example, which is found in Al-Kafi, volume 2, chapter 48. And this is hadith number 141. And the hadith mentions, obviously the example is of, an, of, of a person riding an animal, probably a horse or a donkey or a camel, but we could relate it to, to, till today, riding in our cars. And the hadith says the following, that whenever one of you remembers the favor of Allah, Azza wa Jal, you're on your way to work, <clears throat> let's say, or school, and you remember, <clears throat> you remember one of the favors, one of the barakah, one of the blessings Allah has given you, what should you do? The Imam says, 
let him place his cheek upon the dirt in gratitude to Allah. And if he was riding on an animal, let him descend and place his cheek upon the dirt. Obviously, this is a time where you could actually just do that. Get out of your, get off your animal, put your face on the ground and thank Allah. When you remember at that particular instant in time, a blessing Allah has given. But the Imam makes it practical. He says, if you're not able to get off of the animal or whatever you are riding upon, maybe to the, the publicity that this would garner, people would look at you and, and, and kind of look at and wonder what you're doing. And would recognize maybe that maybe this was a, a culture that the people had of showing thanks to God at every instance that they remember the blessing. He says, if you think that that would gain you too much notoriety and publicity, then he said, put your cheek upon your saddle, on the saddle bow. He says, if that's not possible, then place your cheek upon your wrist and then praise Allah upon whatever you had been favored with. Maybe you can't put your cheek on the steering wheel. It's not safe to do that. You may end up in an accident. Maybe you can just put your cheek or your, your cheek on your, on, your, uh, on your wrist as you're driving and just say, Shukran lillah. Ya Allah, I remember the blessing you gave me. I remember the air I can breathe as a blessing. I remember any blessing that you have given me, Ya Allah. I can't get out of my car and stop and do a sajda on the highway right now. I can't, you know, in any way show you that level of gratitude but at least the minimal I will do Ya Allah is as the Imam says I'll place my cheek on the back of my hand and I'll praise you in that way to show you that I'm, grad I'm grateful for what you have given to me <clears throat> therefore in any way possible brothers and sisters we need to recognize and give Allah our thanks the greatest of the benefactors in our lives, of course our mother and father <clears throat> have done so much for us in our life, giving us, giving us this existence, providing us, nurturing us, giving us the food, the water, the sustenance that we've needed to go. They've paid for our education, they paid for our marriage, we have to thank them. But who gave all of them? Who gave them all of that? It's Allah. So even when we thank our parents, we're thanking Allah. When we thank somebody who opened the door for us at the mall, they have energy given to them by Allah. So we're indirectly thanking Allah. And you know, even if we were to give Allah thanks 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for our entire life, we could never exercise the right to give Allah thanks for all of His blessings upon us. As Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن تُؤُدُّ نَعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا were you and I to try and count the blessings of God, rather the blessing, the singular of God, we and I, you and I would never be able to do so. And even the Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it's Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam in the Dua of Arafat, I believe it's Sayyid al-Shuhada actually, Imam Hussein alayhi salam in the Dua of Arafat, he says that um, every time I thank you, Ya Allah, I need to be, giving you thanks for you giving me the ability to thank you. And so it becomes a circular. You can never thank Allah. I can never thank Allah. Because every time we thank Him, we have to thank Him for giving us the ability to thank Him. And so we would never be able to do so. Let me end in the next couple of minutes. I just want to present you one beautiful way of thinking about the blessings that we have. And this is seen in a dua that we probably have never heard about or never recited. It's known as Dua Joshan as -Sagir. Now you and I know Dua Joshan Al-Kabir because in Ramadan we recite this. It's recommended on the first night of Ramadan to recite Dua Joshan Al-Kabir. 100 portions, 10 names of Allah, 1,000 names of Allah we recount in a beautiful, beautiful Dua that the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam taught to us. But we have an even more beautiful, uh, more impacting I should say, or more um, unique supplication in, by Imam Musa al kadhim the seventh Imam, known as Dua Joshin al sagir And obviously just by its name, it's Sagir, it's very short. It may take you maybe six or seven or ten minutes maybe to recite the Dua. I'm going to give you just one stanza, one portion of this Dua. And every line, every, every stanza basically ends with us thanking Allah or trying to give thanks to Allah. But what does the Imam say in this one stanza? He says the following. He says, My God and my Master, 
Many a living being is poor, needy, exposed, unemployed, trembling, striving, afraid, starving, thirsty, and looking for someone who may lend them a hand, or expecting that one of your more devoted and close servants will come to his rescue, subdued by the heavy load of hard labor, tired from burdensome servitude, short of provisions, burdened with taxes, surrounded by terrible calamities, and he cannot or she cannot turn to anyone but to you to drive away disasters. And then we say in the dua, but I have people who uh, obey me. They are around me and they obey me. I'm the boss. They're the, they're the employee. And I enjoy a pleasant life and I am privileged and honored and I'm safe from misfortunes. Again, go through the dua, please. It's available on duas.org and you'll see the beauty with how the, the seventh imam shows us that we should be gra grateful and show gratitude to God for all that we have. Now we can try on a weekly basis, other than after our daily namaz, to set aside some time to thank Allah, either just by our own words and our own language. It doesn't have to be in Arabic. It doesn't have to be the words of the Imam. You and I can talk to Allah in Gujarati, in English, in French, in Urdu, in Swahili, in Kachi, whatever language you know, talk to God in that language. But when we use the beautiful supplications as taught to us by Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, alayhim was salatu was salam, then we get to a different level of recognizing the thanks. And that's what we're going to do in our next two sessions, is by the will of Allah, we will re review dua numbers, munajat, rather number six, munajatu shakirin, the munajat of the thankers of God. We look at some of the beautiful passages of how the fourth imam has shown us to thank Allah, how we have the inability sometimes to thank Allah, and what we can do to get into a better a mindset of being able to show gratitude to the one who has given us so much in this world. As we conclude on this blessed Thursday night, the first Thursday of the year 2021, we ask Allah to allow this year to go easy for us. We, allow, we ask Allah to allow the vaccines which are being put within the society today to be effective, to actually... Uh, give us a cure from this COVID-19 pandemic. We ask Allah that for all of those who left this world in 2020 and past years gone by, that Allah grant them, those believers who have passed away, that Allah grant them a proximity to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad in the Barzakh. We ask Allah to remove any of the sins that they may have had. We ask Allah to protect all of us, all of the believers, all the mu'mineen in Canada and around the world. We ask Allah to protect, protect all of humanity. And last but not least, we ask Allah to remove all oppression that people around this world are facing, especially in the Muslim countries. We ask Allah to allow their leaders to see the light of day, to be able to be just and fair with their people. And if they are not in a position, if those leaders are not in a position to change, that Allah changes them. And last but not least, we ask Allah to hasten the return of our 12th Imam, Imam Al-Hujjah, Imam Sahab Al-Amr, wa akhir al-Zaman, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and that we can be amongst the helpers and assistants and those to glance upon the beautiful face of Imam Al Mahdi. Rabbana Takabal Minna inna ka anta Samiul Alim. Let us conclude with a recitation of a Surah Al Fatiha for the Thawab of all of the Marhumin, for those who may have sponsored tonight's Majlis, and for all of the Marhumin in general. Surah Al Mubarakat Al Fatiha with one salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صدق الله العلي العظيم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته